Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. Well, here we are, San Diego Comic-Con 2023. You know I had to put together a video where we interview comic book dealers to get their perspective on the state of the comic book market. These videos are always really fun to do. It's great to get thoughts on the market that are not my own. Obviously, it's a bit on the longer side, but there was a lot of great information in this and I wanted to include as much of it as I could. So grab some bags and boards, sit back, relax, use this as a podcast, and I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Of course, if you could like, comment, or subscribe, I would appreciate it. And with that, I give you dealer interviews at San Diego Comic-Con. All right, well, I'm with Jamie from Southern Cal Comics. Jamie, how's it going? San Diego Comic-Con 2023. This is your uh, home show in a way. You're, you have a store here in San Diego. How, how has the show been so far? What I would consider average. Average? Average. Pre-pandemic average. Okay. Uh, the new, there's no new average. Right. I, I'm just calling it that. Gotcha. So, so would you say compared to 2022, was that a better show in terms of sales and volume and people and, and buying? 2022 is the... Uh, that's the last of the over-the-top coming out of pandemic spending. Right. Here, it was like watching crack addicts at work. They just couldn't spend their money fast enough. They needed to get out of lockdown. And they, this was their chance to really explode the first big convention to do that right. since 2019. Right. So then, I guess, you know, a lot of people are always interested in hearing about kind of your sense of you know, where we are in the market, a lot of people feel like, oh, you know, the prices have crashed or corrected and stuff like that. What's your general sense of where we are in comics now? I guess now that we're past the COVID market, now that we're past sort of stimulus money going into things and things like that, what's your outlook on the future, rest of the year, buying comic books? Are comic books dead? Should I should I buy now? What, tell me if what you, to do, Jamie. If you flip your camera around, look at, look at this. That's a, look at these kids. This right. has been all week. Right. So if you gauge it on a generational thing, you see all these kids here, there's no fear of the future. It continue to be strong. This year, San Diego Comic-Con, one of the, the different things is that, you know, we had the writer strike, we had the SAG strike, didn't have, you know, Hall H Marvel announcements. I imagine that in prior years, people might come up to you and say, hey, this Deadpool movie got announced, you have New Mutants 98, you know, that sort of thing. What's been sort of trends if any that you've seen this year are people looking for anything in particular or is it a little bit across the board we know how hall h works because we have spies right and as soon as word comes out they race down here to tell us have you got any of this title and that issue right and we pull them because we know none of that's happening of course right but then again all of those secrets tend to leak out over the internet before the con anyway. Those who are really desperate to know how to cash in or just want to hear the news. Paul H. just puts a face to it. Right. But it's already creeping out. Right. Right now, since there's none of that going on strictly, we're just waiting to see how a week goes. And we've seen this as probably the busiest week consistently all day I've ever had mm. in any con. And I've been going to con for 51 years, and I've been dealing since 1994 right. consistently. This is the first. I, last year with the pandemic, um, there was Hall 8, or with the out, coming out of the pandemic. Right. It's just that the aisle has been filled every day, every hour since Wednesday night. Right. I, I've just never seen it. Look at it. This I've never seen on an hourly basis. Right. Never. Right, wow. And it's got to be because Hollywood took a powder, and I'm fine with it. Yeah. So would you say that then, as far as what people are looking for, is it pretty diverse? Like, some people oh, are looking yeah. at the walls, some oh, people are in the bins, oh. Marvel, DC, gold, silver. If I, could, if I could shuttle people to my store, which is 20 minutes away, I wouldn't have to worry about the fact that I got to kick them all out when I tell them I don't have this and I don't have that right. and I can't help you. If I could shuttle them up to the store, then it would be above average. Because right. everything they want, we have. Right. We just can't fill can't bring it 200 all. square feet. Right. So really just all across the board then? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of 80s things that are seem to be getting more popular. And we only bring a smidgen because we can't fit them in. 
we now know that when we go back to the store and set everything back up, we're going to remodel everything so that we're going to keep one contiguous selection of, of uh, companies that we can take down here, including right into the early 90s, in blocks. Right. Because that's what I, is too many decades for me to handle. Right, right. All right, well, Jamie, thank you so much for yeah. your time. Appreciate it. Sure. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of the show. Thank you. All right, well, I'm with Austin from Reese's Rare Comics. Austin, it's good to see you again. Me I think too. it was uh, literally last year, San Diego Comic Con, where I got you on camera, asked you about the market comics, things like that. Oh, I'm sure uh, I sounded stupid now. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, let's get into it. I mean, so 2023, San Diego Comic Con, we're like midway through the year. This is the biggest show, you Absolutely. know, there is in comics. Super Bowl. How's the show been so far? Show's been really good. Um, it's always good seeing people and what they're buying. And this show, we've been surprised with um, how much people are buying and stuff that's coming off the walls has been interesting. Not your typical uh, Silver Age Marvel issue number ones. We've kind of been selling some of the you know, other keys, so to speak. Some FF5's been asked for a lot. Um, but we've had a good show without selling an X-Men 1 or an ASM 1, which is an unusual occurrence for us. Mm. I guess one of, the, one of the big news stories coming into this year, obviously, there's the writer's strike, there's the SAG strike, all the uh, announcements or the Hall H panels and stuff have been canceled. Yeah. Has there been any sort of like trending things at this show? Like usually you would, maybe you would come in and be like, oh, hey, I want to get, uh, you have Dead, New Mutants 98, I want to get the Deadpool thing or whatever. It's right. Related. Is, there, is there anything that has been a constant ask for you or no, it's random? No, we haven't had that surprise pop book, you know, that yeah. you mentioned, you know, we've had it in the years past. Uh, but nothing like that that, you know, no news came out for us. So it was less of that and more kind of just, I would say back to the basics a little bit where people were just excited to see comic books and at a more affordable price than what they saw them in the last three years. So I think there was almost like that reverse sticker shock for some guys mm. who were, you know, hey, an X-Men won uh, seven grand. Well, it was 12 grand two years ago. And they go, wow, that's actually more of my price range. So we saw a lot more of that. So we got more books out to, uh, I would say, your your average normal comic collector, which was, you know, it's more fun for us. And I think it's more fun on the other side of the table. Right. So people pleasantly surprised. Yeah, by, which by, is always by, rare in our, yeah, our yeah. line of work. Absolutely. Well, well, what was that like for you? You know, you guys deal with a high amount of inventory and volume all the time. You guys are selling constantly. Did you have to reprice a lot of books? Did, was it hurt? Painful? Did you cry when you looked at the sticker? With, with a sticker shock for you guys, like, what, what, what were your what are your feelings right now on the on the market and and kind of where you see things going for the rest of the year? I guess. Yeah, well, I'll tackle the first question first. Uh, we definitely had to reprice a bunch of books, and I knew I wasn't going to fly out here with overpriced inventory because um, we're here to sell books, and we made money when books were going up, and sometimes you're going to lose money on the way down, and that's just how the market works. Um, but we want to be, you know, as reasonable as we can. So we're trying to move inventory so we can acquire new inventory. Um, and then where do I see the market going or how things are now? You know, the most surprising thing for me this week is that we had a really good show selling to regular retail customers. So a lot of people watching this may not know, but a lot of dealers will buy from each other, um, you know, if they don't have a certain book or right. they have a customer for something specifically. And that can boost your show um, when someone's buying that way. Uh, when you don't do that and you're only relying on the retail public to buy stuff, it's a little more uncertain. So we had a really good show selling to the retail public, which for me is a strong indicator that things are kind of climbing back a little bit. Um, and I don't like making predictions on things because if I you know, knew the crystal ball, then I'd be buying all the right books and selling right, right. all the other ones. Yeah. However, um, things like that and, and the, the volume of, at which people are buying seems to be increasing slightly. Um, and so I think we're, we're moving in a positive direction. Um, and I think the next six to eight months could be a good time to buy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And do you think it's, and, and like you said kind of earlier, is it a little bit of everything? Like, you get the occasional wall books and people fill in their runs. Yeah. There's no specific trends. DC, Marvel, indie, whatever it is, it's just kind of a shotgun approach right now for what people are buying or so, do you get any little semblance of? Yeah, I mean, as always, you're going to have a lot of people going after the graded keys. Um, okay. That's kind of uh, where a lot of people have pointed for a safe investment, but I've sold a lot of Golden Age this week. I think a lot of people saw that that was a bit safer place to park your money over the last couple months mm. when, you know, AF-15 and X-Men 1 and Spider-Man 1 all dropped by Right. 30, 40, sometimes 50%. And the golden age kind of stayed the same or maybe dropped slightly and, and in some cases increased. So I think um, for the guys who are looking for a long-term hold, you know, they felt safer putting their money into gold. It's kind of what I said earlier in that I think people are, they're getting back to a point where they're comfortable spending X amount of dollars on a book. 
and that's their grail book. And during COVID, when it seemed uh, unobtainable, now it feels a little more reasonable. And hey, uh, I told myself I was going to buy this if it came down to this price, and now it's at that price. Right. So I think people are just getting back in at a point where they feel good about it. And that's my main advice to anyone always is, you know, buy what you like and buy what you can afford. Right. Um, and I think if you're doing that, you know, you're going to have fun. And if you if you make a little money down the road, that's cool too. Um, but if you end up just with stuff that you like, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Well, that's sound advice, Austin. As always, thank you so much for uh, hopping on the channel today and uh, wish you best of luck for the rest of the show. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. All right. Well, I'm with Jeff, Golden Age Guru. Jeff, here we are, San Diego Comic-Con 2023. How's the show been so far? It's been a pretty good show, I gotta tell you. Um, you know, this this strike did have an effect. Mm. So more people have been on the floor enjoying actual comic books at this comic convention. Right. So thank you all for doing that if you've been a part of it. Appreciate you. I mean, obviously I want the strike to end because I want the best for everybody. Right. But for us as exhibitors, it's been a pretty good show. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely been a ton of foot traffic. I mean, it, we, we've seen it all. I've had a hard time walking through the entire crowd getting from booth to booth. Well, that's because you're Swaggle House and everyone keeps stopping you. Relax. It's not, <laughs> it does not happen. Well, let me ask this, though. We've seen a high volume of people, high foot traffic. How, how is that converted into, you know, just what people are buying and sales and things like that? Obviously, people always like to find out, you know, kind of what what's the haps this year. Last year, obviously, different market. You know, we maybe had corrections in prices. Yeah. What are what have, what have you felt as a seller here at this show? What are people looking to buy these days, and what are what are you the know, behaviors of buyers? Yeah, what I'm seeing at this show is something I haven't seen in maybe five years: is uh, people buying books in the bins and trying to fulfill runs. So maybe not so much committing to big books, but taking that money that they have, they maybe would have put to a signature or a photo, and filling in with more fifty to forty to thirty dollar type price books, and really just trying to find something they really like in these boxes that's what i'm and i haven't seen that in a long time in this hobby right is that would you say that that's a return to form for collectors who have been in it for a long time or do you think that people got brought in with the hype of the wall and then now maybe it's like oh well let me check in some of these bins and like it has to been converted new collectors or is it just people returning to no i think it's two separate people you okay. have the wall collectors who look at a wall and think that every book that is awesome is on the wall that the person has. Right. They'll look at the wall and they'll walk away or something will attract their eye. And then there's the ones who know that they're not looking for wall books and they're just looking for the stuff in the bins. Right. And so it's, yeah, you might get somebody who does both, but really the, there's a big divide between the two. Right, right. Coming into the show, um, obviously you had to prep all your books, you had to price and everything like that. Uh, what was your thoughts going into it? Were you just like, I'm gonna price based on sort of recent comps and or I'm gonna maybe price it a little bit high to do deals. I'm gonna go in with my old stickers from last year. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you how do you navigate that? I'm, I, I'm sure it's like, maybe it's a painful process if you have to see, oh, I have to mark this book down yeah. by whatever, 30%. Right. But, um, you know, cause I know a lot of people joke and, and, and complain about LCSs having, you know, 2021 20, prices on yes. books and things like that. Um, but w what was your process going into your show? <sighs> So the process at a con is a little bit di a little bit different. Okay, you can buy stuff online, but when people come to a con, they do pay up. Right. So some people will keep prices pretty firm. Now, don't get me wrong. There has, like you said, a big correction. I've adjusted prices. Um, if you're stuck in a book, there's a lot of books I'm withholding right now because I expect things to come back, and I right. will not sell. And I right. don't feel like I want to sell for a loss because I'm in a position where I don't have to. I'd rather work harder to move other things at the moment. So um, I'll, def I'll definitely come in. I'll change prices in one day, and I might see three days later that price either went up or down and adjusted again. But when you come to this con, I come to try to move things. I don't come just to, you know, waste time and everybody else's time. Yeah. So that, that's how I look at it. And most of these people here, I think, are starting to get the hint that they need to adjust some pricing, um, but not everybody. Would you say that buyers are more looking to find a corrected price, or and, and they're willing to do it, or are they apprehensive thinking, oh, all this stuff is still going to continue to go down in value? Or do I feel you like things have plateaued to this point. I've seen in a, in a lot of fashion with a lot of books. Um, do I think that things will continue to drop down? Honestly, I don't feel they will. I do feel we're at a pretty good low right now. Yeah. Um, now, I think they may drop again at the end of the year, 
but that's always the case. End of the year when con season is stopped and holiday seasons, things tend to taper down. So I don't necessarily put that as an economic issue. I just put that more as a seasonal thing. Um, but I think the comics are at a pretty good bottom right now, and I think people are seeing that and wanting to jump in and buy some stuff. Right. And um, of course, we're seeing hot books to get picked up. First Rhino, it's been a big book. Metamorpho Buzz, so Metamorpho has oh, been a popular book. So. Well, let me ask about that. I mean, no Hall H this year, no, yeah. say, announcements. You know, maybe in previous years, people mm-hmm. would hear an announcement and then run to your booth and ask about a certain book. Absolutely. Have you found any, aside from the Rhino one that you just mentioned, mm-hmm. Metamorpho? Any trends that people are looking for these days, or is it a little bit more across the board? Um, you know, everyone still wants to pick up their keys. The 129s, uh, the Spidey keys are very popular as always. Uh, DC, I've definitely seen a push towards DC. Green Lantern, mm. Flash, more so Green Lantern of late. But again, we do hear of a show coming out, right? Right, right. Um, so again, it is very much responsive to what is happening uh, outside of this con floor in entertainment to get people interested in a character uh, and want them to grab something important from that title. Do your research and the comics that are pretty good low right now so I think it's a good time to get in but don't overpay. Yeah. So you don't need to set the mark. There's a lot of great books to buy out there. Find something that, uh, but get into something. Put your money towards it, because money sitting in your bank, unless it's important that you need to use to feed, yeah. isn't doing anything for you. Put it yeah. in an asset and uh, you know, shop wisely. All right, well, I'm with Steve from Torpedo Comics. Steve, how's it going so far? You know what, had a great show. Here we are on the last day, but we've had a great show. Yeah, San Diego Comic-Con 2023. You know, you guys have been doing San Diego Comic-Con, I feel like, for many, many, many years. Last year, San Diego Comic Con in 2022, a little bit of a different market, maybe at that time. This year, 2023, we've maybe seen a lot of prices pull back throughout the course of the year. What's your thoughts on the show, the buyer, the habits of people now, outlook on comic books? What, what, what's your sense of people at this show versus maybe in prior San Diego Comic Cons? Well, for us specifically here at Torpedo, we knew that there was going to be a change. So we diversified our product going into different eras. So in years previous, we had silver and bronze and gold, huge books, and you know, it's a nice museum. So this year, uh, we decided that we were going to do modern keys as well, mm. at different price points. So lots of modern keys, you know, uh, you know, Miles Morales and you know, Gwen Poole and all that sort of stuff, but lots of Star Wars, you know, Mandalorian, all that type of material. So when people are going around, they see our silver and bronze. But I've got to be honest, all the heat has been on those modern keys. Books ranging between $100 and $300 flying like this. Whereas a Silver Age book or a Bronze Age book, two or three thousand, four thousand, sort of slow. That's just the honest opinion right there. Right, right. And so it, you think in prior years, it was uh, a little bit more... Uh, free with the money as far as people looking to, to spend and now people are being maybe a little more cautious well of course we, the last couple of years have been an aberration there was a lot of money and prices went sky high on certain keys and uh, all the dealers we all knew that you know that it wasn't going to continue you know the book went from 12 to 15 to 26 K in two years we knew there was going to be some uh, some change that change is happening now it's just a a leveling off of what people really expect to pay for certain things. So right now, the people who are buying silver and bronze are sort of uh, holding their collections on money close to their chest. Right. So we knew that was going to happen, but that new that new collector that's coming out that isn't involved in the silver and bronze haven't been affected by that. Mm, So they're still buying, you know, at a, a, a nice pace. Some of the really, really high prices, you know, for those odd uh, variants, aren't being reached right now. But generally speaking, the enthusiasm at that level for the books from the, maybe the last 15 years uh, is the same as it was two years ago. Right, right. This, this year is a little bit different because obviously we have SAG strike and writer strike, and they canceled a lot of actor panels and Hall H and things like that. I imagine in prior years, someone might run up to you and say. Hey, Deadpool movie's coming out, just announced, do you have the New Mutants 98? You did mention some modern keys moving, but but ha- has there been any particular trending things or books people keep asking you about that have 
been yeah. continuous or is it a little bit more diverse across the board of what people are looking to collect these days? I haven't had anything uh, news wise from the you know from the from the con in regards to books. But for me the surprise has been the Star Wars books. Mm. Marvel to a certain extent. Uh, but the Dark Horse the Dark Horse Star Wars surprises me every year. I don't understand people come by, they buy them all the time. Um, that's something that, you know, we bought a tremendous amount of the Star Wars Dark Horse and we had people come and just buying like heaps of them and heaps of them. That's continuing, which shows that has a strength. Right. They're still continuing the, the TV series that they've had, you know, the word of mouth, people coming in saying they still have to get this, the knights of that, and the first appearance of Mara Jade, and, and it just keeps going and going. For me personally, that's the, sh the shock of the show, the amount of Star Wars that I saw. Oh, that's really interesting. Let me, let me pivot a little bit at this. You know, there's still a lot of, I think, collectors out there that, that are maybe, like you mentioned, holding the, the cash close to the vest, still a little apprehensive thinking, oh, prices are gonna come down. I imagine that you've been collecting for a long time, you've been in this for a long time, you've seen ups and downs and things like that. What's your maybe thoughts of the future, words of advice for those people that maybe are a little bit scared to buy that book that they're going after? All right. So. You're right, I have been around a long time, seen a lot of trends, you know, up and down. Right now we're in a downward trend, and right now is the time to buy, okay? Because in about two or three years, everyone's gonna say, wow, can you remember when the prices were low? In about two to three years, we're gonna be back up to record prices again. Quality always comes back, okay? An FF1, a Showcase 4, they're not gonna be going away. Okay, so in about two or three years, people are going to say, oh, can you remember when the prices dropped? Oh, I bought my copies then. You should be one of those people that said, I bought my copies then. Right. You know, if you're a dealer and you have and you overpaid and you have the power to do it, hold your books back. Don't sell them right now. Hold your books back. And then you go and buy, you know, whatever you can buy. And then in three, year, three or four years time, when everyone says, wow, did you see that book just sold for 68K? And you're like... Ooh, it's funny, I, I bought it for 33K. Right. That's the cycle. We're in that cycle right now. Take advantage of it. All right. Well, Steve, very, very good advice. <laughs> thank you so much for your time, and uh, hope you have a great rest of the show. All right. Thank you very much. Well, I am with Brad from FVF Comics. Once again, San Diego Comic Con 2023. Brad, it's good to see you. Hello. Well, here we are once again. It was a year ago in 2022 when I did the same thing. I mean, I've done multiple times talking to you, but... Uh, I miss you. Uh, no, you don't. He's just saying that. I do. I miss it. But 2022 was a different market. It was a different year. Uh, here we are, 2023. Yeah. Some prices have changed over the course of that calendar year. Oh, boy. But, uh, you know, it feels like there's a lot of people on the floor. Uh, you know, how, how's the show been for you so far? Well, I can tell you... Uh, right now, people were wondering, are there going to be a lot of people because of the strikes? Right. And um, my little hallway here has been very airy and, and uh, open. And you can walk around. There's elbow space. I, I think when people come down the, the vintage hall, they're usually more serious. They like briefcase guys. They're looking for stuff. But I tried walking to the end of the room and I couldn't get by. So there's tons of people. Yeah. They're still, you know, get bumped about four times when you're going in. And, and you, I mean, I, I did it once. I wouldn't do it again. Take your life in your hands on some corners. But um, buys were very slow for me. I want to say usually by the end of the preview night, I could do uh, probably a third of my tally, maybe even a five-figure tally, but I did four figures, and there was a decimal point in between the four. It was 18.00, 18 dollars. Yeah, you could do the math and you realize what that is, but that was preview night, but, but have you felt like it's heated up a little bit throughout the course of the show? Yeah, it wasn't hot. Um, I was very worried. It's Sunday. Okay, and I, I don't jinx things, and I just said, you know, all I need is uh, a, a new customer, uh, some exciting people, people that came back two or three times and then finally pulled the trigger. 
all of that is happening today. This is the first break I've had all morning. So um, I'm smiling. It may not be the best San Diego I've ever done, but each day got a little brighter and everybody's been happy because I, just because I'm not doing that well, doesn't mean I'm going to charge more money. Right. I'm that guy who says, hey, uh, let's give people a deal, make sure they know they're getting one, and let's uh, entertain some offers. Let me ask about this. You know, I still, to this point, get a lot of people writing the comments and stuff, and they'll, they'll vent about, oh man, my, like L- you. Yeah, my LCS still's got that 2021 price on it. And you know they're they're either they're frustrated about a price or they they're thinking like oh there's no way I'm going to pay that it's still going to go down. I've noticed here oh, yeah. some prices still a little bit high from time to time, but people I think want to know like what's what's a good way if I go up to Brad's booth and I say hey, Brad where's Brad this guy oh, if I go up to your booth and I say hey like would you would you take this I mean what's a good well, way to go about I, it I mean there's two ways to look at this uh, I could come from my dealer's standpoint yeah. But I always like to also say that I've always and never stopped being a collector. So uh, I think, of course, I would say to people, you know, do you if they, if I give them a discount and then they are kind of iffy or they start putting it back and I go, but you didn't make an offer. I, I, I think I'm doing that more at this show because it was so slow at first. Um, but OK, for all you collectors out there who are really into the hunt, uh, you know, who get excited, don't show your excitement, right? You know, be be a, a card shark and play it out and then say, will you take? Because in most cases, um, if it's fairly close and it's a, a fairly solid offer, I think we're going to take it. Um, the big books is like real estate. You don't want to buy a house uh, and then have it be worth less than you bought it for. Maybe on a hundred dollar book and less, it's not so important. What's five dollars here or there? But on a twenty thousand dollar book, and in six months it's, you lost two grand or something, that never feels good. Yeah. So people are skittish on the giant books, and and let me say, I mean, I don't want to just unload these, but I am taking offers, and here's my ultimate philosophy. We buy collections, we buy big amounts, so why don't we be okay with a little bit of a loss on one book when it's a win on a hundred others? In the overall scheme of things, as long as you're in the plus. Uh, And as a buyer, do your homework, go to what the GPA is, what the last eBay sales are, don't expect us to sell for the rock bottom because what my what I say to people is like, oh, that book sold for that much? Don't you wish you were the guy that bought that one? I mean, I'm not. It's not like being. I'm not being mean. I wish I was the guy that bought that one. Right. I, like I, I, right. I, we all, especially Comic Con, can't be the lowest ever sold. That's what what I say. Right. But we can get pretty close. Well, let me ask this. You mentioned no Hall H. People talking about that. So there's no announcements. There's no rush to the booth to get the such and such book that got announced. But have you felt any sort of interesting trends? What people are looking for in, in particular? Marvel, DC? Or has it been just kind of varied and different? Well, uh, let's just go, this is Southern California. I do so many more Marvels here in Southern California. For, and that I learned that 15 years ago. San Francisco, Berkeley, uh, you know, all those areas, they love tents at DCs. So I, ha- I can't bring all my boxes, so I made custom boxes, 20 custom boxes, you know, with only the best DCs. And somehow I was batting a thousand at first, even though I didn't sell a lot. Somebody said, "Do you have any challengers?" I have one, and they go, "Oh, that's the one I need." And I got lucky, and and some brave and the bold, and you know I usually have them, but I marvels, man, it's marvels. Mm. The trends of the marvels. Everybody's still speculating: Will this one be in a movie? Yeah. Uh, who, what got? What's been out there as like a, a you know trailer or a primo kind of? Uh, is it uh, 
Transformers and G.I. Joe? Is it going to be Red Sonja? Is it going to be Lilith? Everybody's talking about uh, little rumors. And uh, certainly all Marvel female superheroes and villains are really good. And Zaytana, uh, at every time around the corner, someone wants a Hawkman 4 or uh, the, you know, Justice League appearance covers. There's so few vintage books with her. Uh, I don't know, maybe they know something I don't. Do right. you? Right. You also mentioned too this, like uh, a lot of people are coming up to you looking for the Todd McFarlane's and the Jim Lee books because they're doing the signings and stuff. Do you feel like maybe without the movie announcements, people are kind of going back to, oh, let me get the comic to get the signing as just sort of the pure collectible comic? Yes, signing. Right. So I think, um, as we all know, what is there, 7 million print run of Spawn 1? I sold out. I had six copies. And then my neighbors in the business are going like, wait, you got how much for that? I mean, uh, look, at Fairly, uh, it, it would be, uh, you know, $50, $60 in high grade. And I'm selling once no matter what the grade is. It, it, they want a certain book. And it's not really Todd McFarlane... Spider-Man so much, um, you know, the Spider-Man run, that not amazing, but it is amazing Spider-Man, Tom McFarlane's, but more spawns than ever, and almost any number spawn. This is a crazy show for spawn, mm. um, and, and there's all the signing ones. They're not on strike. They've got huge booths. People are paying money for those signatures, and they love it. They come running back, they go, look, thank you so much. I try to tell them, well, let's get a book where a great place for him to sign is. Let's look at that. Look at the action on it. But he could sign here in, in like, silver. Wouldn't that look great? Or sign here in gold. Right. And, and sign here in, you know, I mean, it, I, listen, autographs help us. I, I'm not, personally, I don't have any signed books in my, I don't do that because, I'm old, I guess. Uh, Stanley signed for free. You could sit down and talk to him for like two minutes. Um, I sat down at, at the Universal in 1990, told him my life story and, and how my collection was so amazing. Saw it when I was 12 and bought it when I was 30. And he goes, my, that's an immaculate collection. That's cool. Well, Brad, it's been a great time talking to you as always. And again, hope you have a great rest of the show. Any uh, last words of wisdom for the people? Buy yeah. what you like. And you listen, it's Don't all... buy. Comics are worthless. Well, tell oh them what my God, doing. comics is the best thing I ever did. And are doing. And keep it up. Be a, a wise hunter, a wise buyer. I only regret the comics I never bought. All right, well, I'm with Danielle from Nerdy Girl Comics. Danielle, how's it going so far? Hey, uh, it's been a really good show. Yeah? Really good show, yeah. San Diego. Uh oh. We're gonna have a collapse happen behind us here. <laughs> well, every time I talk to you at San Diego Comic Con, it seems like everything is crashing. Speaking of no, crashing, <laughs> let's talk about the market. No, no, no. Um, so, last year had you at San Diego Comic Con. A little bit different market in that yeah. year. Now we're here in 2023. Um, what's going on in comic books these days? How are, what are people doing? What are people buying? Are people buying? Does anyone buy anymore? Does anyone care about comic books? What's going on? Well, I think people will always care about comic books. Yeah. Um, I think that we've definitely seen a shift in the market. I think that gone are the days of insane auction prices where people are just scratching their heads with why is that happening. I think people are getting a little savvier. People are being pickier now with what they're choosing to spend their money on. Um, and I think that prices are coming back to where they should be. Right. Things got too expensive. If anything, I think we're in the middle of an overcorrection. Mm. People are selling too much. Too many books are hitting the market too quickly. There's not enough people to absorb them. Right. There are some good deals to happen right now. So I think that we're slowly starting to settle back into where the market is and we're seeing that like gradual tick up again. Gotcha. Do you get the sense from people that you've been interacting with at the show on the on the buyer end, are they still very apprehensive to pull the trigger on some things or do they feel like, oh, this feels price right, I feel okay about that? I think that if you price your books fairly, you're gonna sell. Okay. I've had a really good show. I didn't know what to expect coming into San Diego this right. year. Um, I didn't beat last year's numbers, but I'm happy with the show this year. So this year is a little bit different because of SAG strike, writer strike, no Hall H, yeah. those things were canceled. I imagine in prior years, people might come up to you and be like, 
hey, do you have New Mutants 98? They just announced Deadpool, things like that. Have you felt a difference this year in terms of, say, maybe what's trending at the show or people's interest? Do you feel like it's sort of more diverse this year as far as what people are looking to buy? Or what's your sense of that? You know, I think that there's less and less of that movie hype with new characters coming out anyways in comics. Right. People are just hunting first appearances anyways. I think it's been kind of nice to f- that people who normally have tickets to come for Hall H, they're now forced to come over into comics. Right. I've had a couple of dealers that have a lot of back stock come over and say, yeah, like random people have walked by and they're like, oh, you have $5 books, $10 books? Oh, well, I'll buy this because they don't have anything to do in Hall H and they see something they like. And right. I think it's giving other dealers better shows too. Mm. All right, well... Do you have any uh, tips for buyers? What, what's your outlook for the rest of 2023? You know, give me some sagely advice as I continue with my comic book collecting for the rest of the year. Collect what you love. Don't feed into hype. And I personally am collecting Hulk 181s. I'm going for Spidey 129 still. Mm. Giant size X-Men 1s, X-Men 94s. I think they're all really, really cheap right now. And I think that we're going to see some movement in those in the next couple of years. Very cool. Well, Danielle, thank you so much for your time. and I hope you have a great rest of the show. Thanks for hanging. All right. Well, I'm with Richard from Bedrock City Comics. Richard, here we are. San Diego Comic-Con 2023. Yep. Um, how's the show been so far? It's uh, been interesting this year. It started off just no energy and kind of... Uh, just waiting for it to start and then as the days have gone on it's gotten a lot lot better every day's been better and better than the last we've done a lot of swapping and trading around with customers and uh, sold a little bit of stuff it's been a good show yeah yeah well so I'm sure you've been to San Diego Comic-Con many years before Mm -hmm. I've been kind of going around just sort of asking people's you know takes on last year's show compared to this year obviously there's been different Prices, you know, changes, turnover in the market, and things like right. that. Um, what has the experience been on this side selling comic books, as far as like buyer behavior? Like, are people now looking to buy? Are people still kind of apprehensive, thinking, "Oh, maybe this is going to continue you to know, go down in value"? What's it, your sense on that? It's it's interesting. Comic collectors are uh, really astute with the market, and obviously, the market's kind of come down from where it was at the height of COVID and. Uh, you know, all the heat of 2021 and early 2022, and then we've kind of had some fall off and silver and bronze and corrections and all this stuff. But, you know, people are just looking for deals. They're looking for buying, they're looking for spending their money on the right thing at the right price, but they're still collecting. And so everything's still really active. And I I feel like we've found a kind of a plateau at the bottom right now. And I mean, it's it's interesting how many times I've been asked for Spidey 129s and Hulk 181s here when those books are supposedly dead, you know? Right, right. And, uh, you know, Golden Age and uh, the 50s horror books and the esoteric stuff, it's completely different. Stuff's still hot yeah. and just cranking along. But, uh, but, you know, bronze and silver, they're still moving. Those books are still flipping around and uh, still getting asked for. Yeah, so. yeah, it's a good time. Yeah. Well, what do you think? Like, I know a lot of people talk about how sometimes when they go up to the booths, they see an old sticker maybe on it, and they're they're a little bit like apprehensive to make offers on old books because maybe a dealer hasn't changed it yet right. or updated it. What would you say for a lot of buyers out there? I know they want to hear this. Like, what's a good tact well, in going up to your booth and saying, Richard, hey, you know, uh, you got any room on this book? What's going on here? We're constantly changing offers. Yeah. So I have missed a couple. I have no problem with anybody making an offer on anything. Right. As long as they don't have a problem with me either rejecting it or countering it or whatever. And, um, you know, it's there's, there's not right way or a wrong way to do it just be respectful of dealers and what they potentially could have in something and if they can't negotiate on it you know you kind of can't be mad about it because there are a lot of dealers that are buried in some books from where the peak of the market was six eight you know and 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 really don't want to take a loss right right And, and and some that are are comfortable or uh financially able to take the hit on some books and they'll change some prices and be more negotiable right we're fortunately in the latter thing and so 
you know, prices went up and we sold stuff when they were hot and now prices have come down on things and we'll price them down and sell them where they're supposed to be now. And uh, um, so, yeah, that's, you know, just, just be respectful. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the key. Sure, yeah. sure. So uh, I guess, you know, you've kind of been dealing for a long time. I know you've been in this market. You've probably seen some ups and down swings and things like that. What sure. would you kind of say for people who maybe sort of feel like, oh, I, is now the right time to buy? My, is it, Just yeah, always look down? at the long view on all of this stuff. Everything, I've, I've always said every dog has its day with comics. And right now, golden age and 50s horror stuff is hot and silver is lower. And all of those things will come back around. They always do. So, um, you know, buy the things you like buy them at, when they're at their bottom, buy them when they're at their top, just buy them. But on the long view, there's always this line that goes like this, right. and it continually happens. It was, you know, in the 80s, Silver Age was dead, and look at mm. what Silver Age did in the 90s, and Golden Age was dead in the early 90s and early 2000s, yes. and look where it is now. So mm. everything has its day. What has been, if anything, the, the the behaviors or trends that you've seen with buyers are they, is it kind of same old for you or are people a little uh, more a little discerning but they were a little discerning the year before okay and they were less discerning the year before that right, you right. know it, it seesaws um a lot of it's excitement you, you, you last time we talked i explained you know i i'm a little frustrated with shooting stars guys come along and hype up stuff and right. everybody gets excited and, and you know i i always call that the two percent Right. You know, the other 98%, I think people know what they're doing. They're in it for the long haul, yeah, right. you know. Um, you know, the market to me is a seesaw when it comes to these big books going down. Like, you know, a book can go from $500 to $1,000, but gee, my $5 book is still $5 book right. 20 years ago as yeah. well as today. Yeah, You know, yeah. stuff like that. You know, you walk around and you can see different prices for different things. Don't get frustrated. It's just who's grading it. Right. Right. LED. You know. Yeah. Um, but as far as San Diego Comic Con, it's always got a good buzz. Mm. You know, you got a lot of people from a lot of places. Now, you've talked to me at LA. Um, a huge amount of people from Southern California go to LA. I don't know how many people are out of town, but I've talked to people from Brazil, Mexico, uh, you know, Michigan. Right. Uh, Vancouver. Right. You know, so so this is a destination for collectors. So, yeah, you're going to get guys that put a lot of work into being here. Right. You know, right. Uh, expense, hotels, airfare. Um, you know, you go to a comic book store, all it is is gas. Right. Right. right it right. costs you gas. So do you feel like that that makes people want to spend more here or are oh, they now in the hole because they oh, had to spend oh, so much? Oh, no, they're here to, to you know, you don't, go to the, you don't go to the prom and not dance. Right. right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, they're here to buy. Right. And sometimes the expense, you know, is, is minimal or, right, right. or they're not as concerned with. But, yeah, uh, the young man I was talking about. Hell or high water, he was he, going he was home with the first rhythm, yeah, 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 which he did. Yeah, which he that's did. interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, let me ask about that and, and kind of finish out with this. Is just, you know, you've you've been in it for a long time. You've seen ups, you've seen downs. Yeah. You've seen. You've told me in the past where it's like you felt like, oh, the market is done, so you know, or you thought yeah. the market was dead. Well, well, or, no, I've never said that. Or, what I think is, it, it doesn't go down; it returns to normal. Ah, okay. We get this two percent that's got everybody all hyped up, especially right. the movies gets everybody. Right. No collector I know drops out of collecting because the prices are too high or too low. They're lifelong collectors. Right. It's, 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 a, it's a few people that come along that do a lot of yelling. Right. Oh, right. yeah, you got to buy this great variant. You know, my favorite, favorite story recently is Batman the Dam. Everybody knows what's going on with that. There's three books, three big books, and it has something in it that I don't want to mention. But a couple years ago, it's like two, three hundred bucks. Right. Oh, you can get all three in my store for fifty bucks if you want. Right. Right, right now, right. And it's only two years later. Right. So that's, I'm not contempt. I'm just wise. Right. To, right. To the, the 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 ups and downs and stuff, and through it all, comic book collectors are the most dedicated people I've, I've ever met. Hmm. You know, they really want to fill that run and they really enjoy it. And I got a couple of youngsters that, that won't start reading until they got the whole run, hmm. you know, which is kind of cool. That's yeah. very cool. So that's just it. Um, comic book people really love the comics and, um, you know, fighting about the price is a personal thing. Right. You, know, you came all the way to Comic-Con, spent all this money to get here. 
and it's 20 bucks more than you thought it should be. Give them the 20 bucks. <laughs> All right? right, right, right. You know, if it's a copy you want and a, lot, a copy you love. Um, I say this all the time. I, I get a guy who says, oh, look what I found at a garage sale. I said, well, what'd you find at the other 30 garage sales? Yeah. You follow me? So, yeah, yeah if you got to pull the trigger, pull the trigger. You know, don't cry. Buy the best, cry once. All right, well, I'm with Bob from High Grade Comics. Bob, here we are, San Diego Comic-Con 2023. How's the show been so far? All right, I'm going to give you a vision of what the current market is. Now, people, you can take this uh, as a good thing or a bad thing. Basically, take one hand, put it here. Take the other hand, put it over here. And basically bend forward. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> the market is actually pretty good. Uh, the show, even though I was concerned coming in, uh, has done better than expected. Uh, the sales have been good. Buying has been good. While attendance is still off pre-COVID, um, the show is still bringing in buyers from across the country, which is a good thing. Uh, pricing has sort of stabled. Uh, you can actually buy some books while we're still kind of working through COVID deals yeah. uh, as an inventory. It's, you know, it's taking some time, but there were some deals made this weekend that uh, have been fair for both buyers and sellers. Right, right. So talking about last year and like some of the prices that were a lot higher having to come into this year did you find yourself needing to sort of reprice a lot of inventory or i guess that you've been uh, doing that throughout the I, course I, of the year last year's the the last couple of san diego shows were numbers that were very very good very like it's very hard for me to replicate last year's sales right even though i've had similar books um there's still that there isn't quite that you know like they books were literally in one hand, out the other. Right. This year, buyers are a little more discerning. There's always going to be the GPA buyer or below, which is fine. Um, but the difference is, since my market is just not retail, there are wholesale. You know, there are wholesalers that are common that can buy books for their customers, which is very important when you're buying and selling. Right. You know, it's just not the retail market; it's the wholesale market. Right. Which is, for a while, and I've been doing shows earlier in the year. I could tell that the dealers were not restocking. Mm -hmm. And as always, when it's a buyer's market, you know, you have to be, you know, when buyers have control, when they're buying books, they have the money. So they're going to be very difficult to sell to. It's not like, oh my, you know, I'm going to take this book and, you know, a month later it's 10% higher. That's right. really not the way the market should work anyway. Right. But that was what was happening when there was all the stimulus money. Uh, people haven't weren't traveling, doing show, you know, going on vacation. They could come to a show and they had ten thousand in their pocket. Right. Now that we're traveling and going back out, on you know that that money goes to vacation, it doesn't go to comics. Right. No more stimulus, interest rates. You know, it all affects how the market works. And, right. And also, not everybody making money in uh, Bitcoin, right. Pokemon, right. Magic. I mean, it just gets. On and on with sports cards, for example, right. which the big show is coming up next week. Not right. that I'm going to be there. But. <laughs> so, so, so you get a sense though that the buying has been at this show fairly consistent. Like people feel Steady. like, hey, if if the price feels right, then I'm willing to take that chance. Or the the, the fear yes. of like, oh, yes. it's going to continue to go down yes. has kind it, of it, subsided. All, with, listen, with any market, oh, it's difficult to find a bottom. Right. Uh, but people are, and, and prices have adjusted on certain books a lot to where now I'm starting to see a sort of stabilization. This year with no movies, announcements, the, you know, Marvel not making anything, no characters being here, even though there's a writer's strike, the, while the buzz has been flat, there's still collectors that come here because it's a great show. Right, right. And, you know, they're still buying books. There's always going to be, you know, collectors that want Batman, detectives, uh, actions. If there's there there are action, you know, there's Detective Twenty Seven at right. the auction houses preview. Um, there's been a lot of cool walk-ups, which are very, um, you know, I mean, I've done some deals where, you know, I was able to get some nice keys for some nice books. Pre-code horror, right? A horror, you know, that doesn't need a movie box to sell, right? Um, a lot of times collectors, you know, are still buying, you know, pre-Robin detectives or, you know, Hope Ones. Hope Ones seemed, that was my big theme this, this show. Yeah, Love yeah. Hope. You know, I come in, 
you know, I had five Hulk ones. There's three Hulk ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so pretty much even across the board, like a, a lot of different interests, a lot of these. Yes. Things that always have been popular are still yes. always popular, yes. and a lot of diverse buying, I guess. Yes. And yeah. even, like I said, you know, the deal, some, the beauty about this show is even though there are preview shows or, you know, shows that were a couple weeks ago, you're going to see something here that I don't see somewhere else. And everybody, right. if you're going to make money at this show, you need to have the inventory. Right. And, you know, the, I mean, the first day set up, you know, found the book that a customer wanted. I'm sure the dealer was very happy with the check I wrote him. Right. And, and that's what, you know, that's what you need to be successful at this show. Got you it. have to have the books. Don't be afraid to leave a little money on it. You know, it's got to be a win-win for everybody. If that's, you know, if you want to be successful at this show, you know, kind of put the, you know, don't be greedy. Right. You know, fair works. Right. Greedy doesn't. So, so tips for buyers out there. Make some offers. Don't be make, don't be make, afraid to make fair offers. Don't be the low baller. Listen, I know GPA is a great tool, but please remember, you know, we have other avenues for gathering price information than just GPA. Uh, kind of understand that a lot of dealers are still working off COVID, you know, and it's not that I, you know, a lot of these books I got in trade. Right. You know, this business is still cash in trade. So, you know, when you may come up to my booth and go, wow, that price is, you know, crazy. You know, ask a little information. Say, hey, you know, did you get this book during COVID? Which, you know, the, the market was going crazy. If you wanted a trade, you, that's, you took it at a price now that looks really bad. Right. But that doesn't mean I can't, you know, maybe I'll have to eat some money. Okay, you know, I might have to lose some money. But right. Don't make the guy feel bad about it. You're right. You know, right. I'm not, you know, I try to be fair. And I, and I yeah. it's always, on. It's always a little bit of a bold strategy to, uh, Show the last GPA sale exactly. in your face. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You can you can come in with a little little tap. Well, I guess. the other problem that the hobby needs to understand is without a picture and GPA, just a serial number. You know, if it's a really nice copy, right? That's true. At, or a really ugly faded copy, color cover. You know, things yeah, like that. Yeah, um, you have to do a little more digging than just go. Last GPA was fifteen thousand dollars. If the book is cream to off white. Could be light tan. It could be a really ugly copy, miscut, marble. You know, the big thing is marble chipping. You know, right. I don't want books with marble chipping. Or, you know, if I appeal books sell. Right. You know, do they? You know, don't always buy the label. That's the other thing. You know, right. You know, try to get the best co the looking copy for the price you can afford, and don't you know, you know, don't be afraid to say, okay, you know, I, I need a nicer copy. If the if you know the issue is common. You know, I absolutely, you know, buy it like you're going to sell it. Right, right. You know, go, if your eye is drawn to that defect, then you know the guy you go to sell it to down the road, that's what he's going to look at. It's very true. Yeah, good advice. All right, Bob. Well, thanks so much for your time. Thank Hope you Hope you have a much. great rest of the show, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. All right. Well, here we are back again with Nico from the Blue Chip Comic. Nico, San Diego Comic-Con 2023. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's good Likewise, to see you again. Brother. It's always a pleasure. So uh, let me start with this. How's, how's the show been so far? Well, first of all, it's, it's always great when you come by because, you know, everybody knows swag. If you don't know swag, you should know swag. Follow swag. I tell you what, guys, I mean, it's crazy. I was doing a huge transaction recently, Silver Age Collection, and this guy came up by the guy that I was doing the collection with that I never met before in my life. He brought his some of his data and some of the things that he talks about as, in regards to trends and indexes up at our deal and I was like, that's so funny. I know exactly what you're talking about. I just saw that show myself at my shop with all my employees literally days before I got to that con. That was a previous con. So um, it's always great and thank you for what you're doing for the community. I really believe that it's tremendous value, not just for people like you and I, but so many other uh, aspects of the business as well. Oh, thank you for saying that, man. Well, let's make it back to here, SCCC. How's this show been so far this this particular year, this weekend for you, just in general? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, it's uh, very interesting. You know, this is kind of like what we call a very unique situation that we have here. You know, Hall H, all that stuff's closed, all yeah. the strikes and all the, you know, the things that have to be, you know, that are, that are in the industry that 
no one's really excited about, right? You never know what to expect when you come here. You know, you're a dealer, you're committed five figures into making something happen. You know, you have, you know, sacrifices you make, whatever, and you don't know what's gonna happen. However, I was very surprised to see more people on the floor than ever before. It was already tough to walk and navigate, very thick. You yeah, know. yeah, it was like sardines out there. Oh, it's unbelievable. And so, um, to be able to have a show that had so much foot traffic was good. Yeah. However, to see the sales, you know, to, like if you're asking from a sales perspective, you know, the very beginning was very, um, you know, the preview day was non-existent, right, as far mm. as sales. So every dealer had this like, right, what's right. going to happen, right? right? And then the next day was great. Uh, and then every day since then has been decent, right? It's been like a normal con. Today in the morning, it, you know, the morning rush was just overwhelming. We literally had a, a line of people out the booth. You know, people are starting to find out, you know, our philosophy where we're going to beat anyone's price. So if there's a reasonable price out there anywhere, you know, come back. We got right. you. We're not always in it to make money, but we are in this to make friends and relationships. Right. And so uh, we're looking for long-term customers, not a one-transaction customer. So. Um, you know, line was out the door. It calmed down now a little bit. Thank goodness. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, now we have the opportunity to, to talk uh, comics. Yeah. Well, 2022, last year when we talked, different kind of market. Price was a little bit higher. We've had some pullbacks. Uh, buyers coming in now. Everyone's always trying to figure out when the bottom is. Should I buy now? Is sure. next month going to be a little bit less? Uh, have you gotten any feelings from buyers here at the show? Are they? Are they holding their cash close to the vest still? Are they maybe more apprehensive on the big sticker ones? Let me get in the booths and pull a hundred dollar book here and there. Have you felt anything like that? That's a great question. You know, you know, based on what I just said, Wednesday was definitely a uh, day where we had no idea what to yeah. expect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, um, you know, just like this morning, give you a morning yeah. example. You know, I had some of the largest books I've ever sold today um, from a repeat customer that bought a book, went back, crunched data came back, bought a second book, and then bought that exact same issue, which was uh, ASM 129. He started with a 1.8, bought a 3.0, kept them, and then bought a 9.8, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and I just took that 9.8 on trade uh, for an 8.5 ASM 1. Mm -hmm. So I just took that 9.8 on trade days ago. So just the magnitude of that caliber of blue chip keys, you know, moving hands, you know, just in that short period of time, that short time window, um, was not normal for most cons in the past, and so to see that activity, that was surprising. I'm not right. gonna lie; it was a, it was it was a very welcome, it was a blessing, but it was surprising, right? right. And so, um, the minor books I think have flowed about normal. A lot of, you know, X Men, um, ASM. You know, you can't go wrong with ASM. You know, that's the number one most collected uh, title that I've seen uh, ever in all of my, um, you know, collecting. Uh, investing as well as being a dealer so you know I have all three aspects to this you know and no matter who you are out there you know that there's uh, you know this climate has definitely affected all you know for instance the uh, collector yeah never a better time to buy than right now um, I can't like I said I cannot buy enough collections whether it be for my personal collection or whether it be for for the business side of it we definitely know that you know having cash in the bank now is is going to cost us money. Right. So having cash and comics may not cost us money. It may cost us money if we buy the wrong comic. Right. However, you know, you look You're at the trends. You, you know, comics have never just gone down forever, right? Because right. I mean, you look at that, you know, that that soup one back there. It says ten cents in the cover. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It says ten cents in the darn cover. So if you think ten cents, you know, and I'm selling it for three hundred fifty thousand, and I'm flexible. Um, but three fifty matches someone that's selling a, a one eight. You know, you look at that. You know, say I sell it for three hundred thousand. That is a legitimate. Um, what is that? That's a three million X, right? Yeah. So uh, now, if I sold a home that I bought for one hundred thousand to two hundred thousand, that's a two X, right? Yeah. So I have to double my money to make it a two X. So a three million X. Think about any real estate property, any. Uh, investment portfolio you've ever heard of, forget own, 
heard of. When have you ever seen something do a 3 million X in what? That came out in 1939, 1940. And what is that? 83 years. Yeah. So yeah. it's unheard of. It's uncanny yeah. to think there's a 3 million X opportunity anywhere on the planet. And we're doing it with funny books. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It is so, so crazy. You, you, you forget uh, that at one point, 10 cents was the actual yeah, yeah. price. It's you know unbelievable, I mean? right? And so um, that's just tremendous upside. So now, is it because of COVID? Is it because of the economy that all this stops today? I don't believe it. I don't, I don't believe it. No, I believe that there's been major crisis, wars, um, major world events that's happened historically over the last 83 years, and there's gonna be more to come. Yeah. So for this sophisticated investor, let's talk to an investor for a second, a sophisticated investor, you know, they'll buy in these times more than ever before. Right. They don't trust their money sitting in the bank. They'll buy historically art, some of the wealthiest people will, in, in, in times of turbulence, will invest in art. When the dollar is in trouble, they'll invest in art. Uh, this is classic Americana. This is one of the you know last income oh, no, paper no, no, no. businesses out there right. that's actually profitable. And so you look at that and you think, okay, these are the very beginning of the next 83 years, right? And right. so you, like, you look at the Miles Morales variants. Some people are nervous about the Miles Morales variant. I love the Miles Mo Morales variant. I love the ASM 129s. I know it's Bronze Age, but I love ASM 129 9.8s. Love them. Can't yeah. keep them in. Sold three in the last 30 days. I haven't had one for 72 hours. Not one for 72 hours. So there's certain books that I look and see the trends, but that 9.2 I might have it for a month, right? So right. it's a little bit different product. So knowing that the economy is what it is, knowing that these are the best buying times, you know, I cannot purchase enough. So. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm just like you guys out there on the other side for the business and personally. You know, I have a bunch of friends that are doctors and, you know, and one of the things one of them shared with us when we were out one day is there's more death or mistakes in the hospital from indecision than the right or wrong decision. And so, it's just they didn't decide. They didn't, they didn't act quick enough. And so, if you're out there and you're thinking about a book, yes, you can wait. But I've, and I was telling you personally, out off the camera, I'll just say it on the camera, I've never lost more money in my life in this industry than an indecision and then somebody else had the stones to go acquire that item and they literally rode off into the sunset and so I never have regretted books I bought because I just have to sit on them long enough yeah uh, but I've always regretted the books I didn't buy so right. it's a it's a crazy industry it's a fun industry enjoy the ride buy what you love but more importantly uh, if you're doing it for whatever reason make sure you have the right data to go into that and, and have a, a quality time doing it all right. Well, thank you so much, Nico, and we'll see you on the next one. Well, folks, there you have it. San Diego Comic-Con 2023. There was a ton of information in this video, and I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Obviously, it's up to you guys to decide what you want to do with this information. At the end of the day, of course, the golden rule, buy what you like. Comic book collecting is a ton of fun, and whether things go up and down in the future, remember that is what it's all about. Thank you all so much again for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. See y'all in the next video.